Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see the first of three interviews which I did with Jürgen Leijers aka DJ Fire. In this week's vlog he will share the story behind the Fire and Ice classic Lost Emotions. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Lost Emotions by Fire and Ice, my interview with Jürgen Leijers. Enjoy! Jürgen Leijers is a DJ producer who is born and raised in Belgium. He is mostly known under his DJ name DJ Fire and during the years he has been involved in projects such as Freebase, Intimo, Energy Source and of course Fire and Ice. For the Fire and Ice project, Jürgen worked together with Laurent Veroné, aka Airwave. For this week's vlog, I sat down with Jürgen to ask him about the story behind the Fire and Ice debut track Lost Emotions, some new Fire and Ice material and more. My first question to Jürgen was, how old he was when he started to listen to music? Listening to music, uh, I think when I was very small, maybe... Um Four or five, it must be something like that, yeah. And do you remember some of the bands or the acts that you did listen to then? Uh, maybe uh, a bit, uh, a bit weird, but uh, artists like Cliff Richard mm -hmm. and uh, some, well, rather commercial pop yeah. pop bands from that uh, period, like uh, yeah, Deepesh Mode also. But that was a bit later. Yeah, yeah. Um, the new wave uh, artists that were big in that period. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So that's like in the mid 80s, I guess. Mid 80s, early 80s, yeah. um, the end of the 70s, maybe more disco. But yeah, yeah, I was uh, with music. Um, yeah, working uh, and listening to music at a very young age. Yeah, oh, yeah. Good. And around what time did you start like with making music yourself? Um, making music really uh, in a studio was much later, of course. But uh, <laughs> I started with the drums at home when i was like eight or nine i used some kitchen materials and i started drumming <laughs> on like these uh, carton boxes mm -hmm. and uh yeah maybe playing a bit on a uh, yeah a toy piano but really making music was, was much later yeah of yeah, yeah yeah so yeah are you a classically trained musician no 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 i'm not classically trained i i know what i play and i can listen to music and copy it but I'm not classically yeah, trained, no. no. So which instruments do you play? I can play a bit of piano, I can play a, yeah, a, a bit of, uh, yeah, a, co a copy of a, of a famous song. Mm -hmm. That's only on, yeah. the, on the piano, yeah. not on the synth. Oh, okay. So do, do you remember your very first ever release? Uh, my very first release was in 1997. It was not with uh, Laurent, with, uh, with uh, Airwave because Fire and I started a bit later, but it was with a guy Dimitri de Wever in uh, in Belgium. He had a studio in Leuven, and we started the project Energy Source. That was uh, mid '97, I think. Uh, the very first was together with uh, DJ Ghost, a big name in Belgium. But uh, we also made a couple of uh, Energy Sources uh, after that, and that was without DJ Ghost. So '97 uh, was the first one, Energy yeah. Source. Yeah. Which was also picked up by Tiesto, by the way. Yeah. Ah, oh, that was a good start. Yeah, the very first one. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, what was the title of that one? Energy Source with uh, Everlasting Fire. Everlasting Fire. Oh, then yeah. the real already had the word fire in it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. True. True. So, yeah, for this vlog, we're going to talk about the uh, Lost Emotions, a beautiful trance track uh, for, uh, you did back in the year 1998 uh, under the project named Fire and Ice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you already mentioned him. Uh, it's a project to from yourself together with uh, Laurent Veronet, aka yeah. Airwave. Mm hmm. Uh, first things first, do you remember meeting Laurent for the first time? Yeah, that was uh, a memorable uh, meeting place at the Love Parade in Berlin. So uh, with uh, record label Bonsai, we went with uh, some other artists from Bonsai with a bus to uh, Berlin, to the Love Parade. Uh, pretty long bus drive, <laughs> I think we were like uh, I don't, ten, 10 hours in the bus, something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, I met Laurent in the record store where I worked, but we had a few short uh, chats but nothing uh, really uh, important and uh, I was sitting next to him in the bus and we started talking about music and he already had his uh, first project uh, I think it was P 
PLG and maybe in North Pole some some projects that were in the trans uh, trans direction mm -hmm. and uh, I said like uh, a uh, I really like your productions maybe it's a good idea to work together on something and uh, yeah after a long long chat about music and what we liked and and what he liked in trans and what I uh, played as a DJ we were like yeah you can give the ideas and I can work them out in my studio and mm -hmm. that way we started the project Fire and Ice yeah. uh, at the end of 97 I think we went into the studio uh, which was at his home yeah in his so in his bedroom yeah <laughs> bedroom studio yeah yeah so uh, how did you guys come up with the name Fire and Ice Fire and Ice was actually um, they're pretty funny since you mentioned it everlasting fire my very first one mm -hmm. uh, the name fire uh, the, the word fire was used and uh, he had this uh, studio which which was the iceberg studio he named his studio the iceberg studio so we were like yeah fire and ice maybe that's a good name mm -hmm. uh, the iceberg and then the everlasting fire in those two combined were like fire and ice yeah. and yeah it was a catchy name so that was the idea behind it uh, a good one we started with fire and ice and we yeah the name uh, the name really uh, yeah uh, how do you say it in, in English uh, it really uh, sticked yeah, sticked yeah. people and they immediately knew our oh, fire and ice other oh, strands oh there's a new fire and ice yeah yeah for this vlog we're gonna talk about uh, lost emotions and mm -hmm. yeah, a little bit more about the production process for lost emotions yeah as I told, told earlier um, it was in his bedroom studio at his home in Brussels uh, I think it was a Sunday afternoon probably we went into the studio together and uh, I already played trance but in that time uh, it was mostly uh, German trance I think there was not a lot of uh, up-tempo Belgian trance it was uh, yeah pretty pretty uh, melodic but slow and long breaks and and uh, the Dutch trance wasn't really there yet mm -hmm. uh, maybe Fetty had his project Moon Man which was uh, pretty successful but uh, other than that there was nothing special so we were like we want to make something uplifting something with an emotional break uh, a bit of power in it a bit of drive and uh, yeah I think I took a couple of records with me with uh, yeah some some music in the same direction and I was like listen to this listen to this and and that way we could start and yeah Laurent is, is a genius, he's a wizard with uh, with his instruments and he was like I'm going to use this and that and what do you think about that and yeah in a couple of hours I think we created Lost Emotions so oh, wow not yeah. bad and then, do you remember some of the equipment that was used? Um, that time uh, Lost Emotions long ago I think was even before Ableton or before Logic I think he used Cakewalk as a DAW um, I, th I think it still exists but mm -hmm. it's not that popular anymore and with uh, yeah the usual stuff at the the GP8080 the GV1080 by uh, by Roland uh, Axis Virus yeah a few corks and an Akai a sampler an Akai S2000 mm -hmm. um, which mostly everybody used in the studio back then it was all MIDI um, not like uh, nowadays everybody uses uh, audio files and, mm -hmm. and copies but then yeah, back then it was sample, 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 uh, and edit and edit and and yeah, everything hardware. Yeah, it's not like these times. Uh, yeah, it's everything. Everything is software, and they only use a, a a lead keyboard to play everything. That's a different type. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, what was the most difficult part of the production? Um, the most difficult part, I think, the start. Yeah, because you you start with an idea, but then you have something like. Uh, yeah, the break and, and what are we going to do uh, after the break and are we going to go really hard trance or going, are we going to use uh, software pads? But the, the most difficult thing was the, the start of the project, yeah, I think. Yeah. And after that, it's it took off and the same for the follow-ups. Yeah, yeah you, said, uh, you said this one was made like in three, four hours time. I think it was something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So is there a story behind the title as well? Uh, Last Emotions... Um, Maybe, I'm not sure, but, but I think it was because we were both going through a rather tough time, uh, both uh, um, 
without our girlfriends because we both had the girlfriends and I think it was finished mm -hmm. with his girlfriend and also with my girlfriend mm -hmm. and I think it was something oh, like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, okay. it must have been. Okay. So do you remember who the first person was besides the two of you who got to listen to uh, Lost Emotions once you, once you finished it? Um, probably some family members, I think. Yeah. Um, and then they they gave their opinion, but then again they weren't they weren't in the music <laughs> scene, they weren't in clubs or or in studios. But yeah, probably that the record company was the most important yeah. one, uh, which listened to it and said, "Yeah, perfect, we're gonna we're gonna release this." Yeah, and uh, nice. So yeah, Lost Emotions came out in April 1998 via Ecstasy, which was a sub label of Bullseye Records. Yeah, um, how did how did the track do after the release? Um, I think it was always released on white labels, uh, copy, 300 copies, 250 copies, which were, which were sent to all the big names uh, in the scene. Um, and I think it was picked up really early by the, the bigger names back then. Uh, I'm not sure if they all played it, but guys like like Paul van Dijk, um, Chiesto in his beginning uh, as a DJ uh, because he supported us also like Armin uh, if there's a fire and ice or a lot of of the bonsai related uh, labels they were the ones pushing it to the big audiences so yeah. yeah I think probably those big names from the start yeah yeah okay and do you remember playing the track yourself for the first time in a club or at a party um, I played it a lot uh, back then because I was uh, one of the few really trans oriented DJs back then because most DJs were into techno or house or yeah trans wasn't that big uh, certainly not the uplifting trans that was uh, that was really big in that uh, period so I was one of the first and I think playing it in extreme in Belgium uh, famous club near Brussels uh, at Zillion uh, also played it uh, yeah I don't quite remember the very first one but I played a lot in Holland as well and the big uh, the big audiences knew the track and I played it a lot at clubs in Holland as well so ah, nice so was was music a full-time job for you then um, around 79 uh, 97 98 I think it was a pretty much a full-time job yeah because I worked at the record store of bonsai records uh, from Monday to Saturday I was in the studio when I was not in the studio I was DJing in the weekends so it pretty much yeah took all of my time yeah. even all my free time so oh, did, did you have time to sleep but uh? yeah <laughs> It was a uh, it was um, a, a, bu a busy period. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just say that. Yeah. yeah. So in in December two thousand, a new version of Lost Emotions came out, which was called uh, Lost Emotions two thousand one. Yeah. Uh, why did you guys decide to release a new version? Um, I think the original was still good, but it sounded a bit outdated because we are ninety seven. We made that one, and we were two thousand and one. Uh, I know there was this club sound from Holland, uh, the club hats, those guys had a certain sound and it would be really good in England as well. And we were like, yeah, we want to make something that will work internationally, not only for Belgium or for Holland. And why not use that club head sounds? Was that the bass sound like mm, oh, yeah, this, oh, 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 sounds? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were like, how are we going to do this? Uh, and then he had the other big track, Café del Mar by Energy 52, which was remixed by 3 and 1 back then and was huge. So we were like, we're going to combine those two, use the, the break we used in the original Lost Emotions and see what comes out. And yeah, it was really big in England. It was huge in England. Yeah. So. Yeah, and the original was that was that played in England back then? I'm not sure. People knew it, but I'm not sure if it was that popular. But uh, everyone in England knows the 2001 remix. Yeah. So, so was it, uh, it was a good idea to do. To yeah, record. yeah, yeah. Guys like Judge Jules, all the the residents from uh, the, the super clubs back then, like Passion and uh, and Ga Gatecrasher, they all played it. it. Was on a lot of compilations back then, so yeah. it was it was really. Uh, I think might have been a breakthrough for uh, for the English crowd. Yeah. They didn't know us before then, so yeah. ah, nice. So, what is your favorite memory when it comes to the release of Lost Emotions? Um, I think for me as an artist, maybe yeah, a lot of a lot more bookings as a DJ because I already played in Belgium. I played as a guest DJ at a lot of clubs, but then with uh, Energy Source and after that, especially with Fire and Ice, 
I got a lot of extra bookings there, and that was um, the, pretty much the, the start of my DJ career as well. Yeah. Ah, nice. So yeah, we are recording this interview in November 2023, uh, and at the beginning of this month, I saw a picture on Facebook that made me very happy. Mm -hmm. Fire and Ice yeah. back in the studio together. Yeah. yeah. So I guess that means that we can expect some new material from you guys soon. Yeah, um, we only worked on a, a new mix of an old track uh, so far. I uh, can't tell you too much about it yet because nothing sure yet. So, uh, but I already talked with Laurent, and uh, once there's more time, we both uh, can manage our free time to get in the studio. There's new material coming up. Yeah, yeah. So that's 2024. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, 2024 yeah. probably. Yeah. This year, uh, not yeah. anymore because uh, yeah, release schedules are full as well. So. 2024 new fire and isis for oh, sure for sure well you said I isis so, so more more tracks yeah, yeah, yeah. ah nice planning on more ah that's 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 good yeah um and yeah i guess it will be trancy it will be trancy but we will try to make it like uh 2024 yeah not with the the old breaks the old build-ups because yeah i think that's the reason why trance became less popular because people were a bit bored of the same formula mm -hmm. which came up over and over again. So we want to use uh, the old Fire and Ice sound but combined with new sounds, new structures, new builds um, to make it really... Uh, yeah, for today's standards. Today's standards for the young people Yeah, and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and can we expect any new solo material from you uh, as DJ Fire as well? I'm not sure about that yet because I'm um, also uh, yeah really into techno. I also know a lot of techno producers. Uh, I listen to a lot of techno, even though trance is still in my heart. I'm loving techno at the moment because yeah, techno isn't the techno of the 90s anymore. Techno also combines a lot of melodies, a lot of trance structures. Um, you can look at drum code. Drum code is. For me personally, it's a combination of techno and trance. Yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking about starting new projects and new uh, and new alias for more techno-oriented yeah. productions. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use DJ Fire as a producer mm -hmm. anymore. I still use it as DJ, but that's for the more classic performances yeah, like yeah. Uh, the '90s, uh, the, the the retro we call it in Belgium, mm -hmm. and. Uh, for the new project, I'm going to use the more techno-oriented yeah. uh, things, yeah. and that's also, I guess, in 2024. Then, yeah, I'm oh. working. I'm working on it at the yeah. moment. So that's gonna be a busy year for you. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, are there still people you want to work with, like vocalists or maybe other producers? Not uh, really vocalists, I think, but I'm still looking for yeah collabs with big names. So. Uh, Maybe if uh, Ferry is watching. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe if someone's <laughs> watching, they, they can reach out. Oh, yeah, Ferry. Cool. Ferry would be nice because uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I haven't met him yet. Yeah, maybe who knows? F F Fire and Ferry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so is there still something on your bucket list, music-wise? Music-wise, um, yeah. Maybe making something in a completely uh, different style. Um, I've been thinking about it, but yeah, usually it's it's not that easy because. People nowadays they think in uh, boxes, other or it's trans or it's techno or it's how. Yeah. Uh, in the 90s that was not the case. So maybe yeah, maybe in another direction. Not sure yet. Okay. No polka. No. That, no. No polka. No. <laughs> Definitely. <Thank you>. <laughs> <laughs> so what what kind of music do you listen to in your spare time? Um, might be surprising, but uh, a lot of 80s music. Yeah. 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 I don't know which artist. I mean, I love the 80s as well. Yeah, it goes from uh, from Jean-Michel Jarre to Deepesh Mode to really commercial music of the 80s, uh, Talk Talk, uh, you can name it. Yeah, yeah. If it's not really too cheesy, I, I love a lot of 80s yeah. music. Yeah, oh, nice. And the last question, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Mm, no, not no? really. Um, no, okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for your time and good luck with everything. Thanks a lot, Juan. All right, that was it, this week's vlog, my interview with Jürgen Leijers, aka DJ Fire, and the story behind the Fire and Ice track, Lost Emotions. Jürgen, thanks a lot for your time, much appreciated. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. 
Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And I did two more interviews with Jurgen. In the second interview he will share the story behind the fire and ice track Never Ending Melody. And in the last interview I did ask him about the story behind Forever Young, another track by Fire and Ice. Those interviews will be online in a couple of weeks from now, so stay tuned. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.